So in this demonstration, we're going to show you how to add a drawer to your page. I'm going to start by using one of our Redwood page templates. Specifically, we're going to use the Smart Filter Search page template over here. And we're going to set uh, the title and subtitle for the page. This is going to be a list of employees. So we'll just provide um, related title and subtitles here. Then from our business object, we're going to pick up the employee's business object and drop it into the main slot as a table. So in the initial table, we're just wanting to show two of the columns about an employee, the name and the job, um, kind of a limited amount of information. And the additional information would be shown in a drawer that would pop up once we actually select an employee. So on the table, we're going to enable row selection for a single row. And then we're going to define an event that is going to happen when we actually select um, the record. We're going to use an assign variable here. And we're going to create a new variable. The variable name would be selected employee. Um, and then we're going to assign the row key into this variable. So now we have a way to track which employee was selected. All right, then we're going to go back to the page and now we're going to add the drawer to our page. To do that, we're going to look up uh, in our components, all the drawer related components. You can see there are several of those. We're going to start with a pop-up, a drawer pop-up that we're going to drop anywhere on the page. And then we can enable a, a temporary override so you can actually see the drawer over here. So right now it's linked to the start of the page. Usually you would want it at the end or potentially at the bottom of the page, depending on your UI um, that you're aiming to do. Next thing we're going to do is put a template inside the drawer pop-up to represent uh, our best practice for a drawer. In this case, it's just the general template for a drawer. Um, we're going to again provide a title and a subtitle. Um, and again, there are different types of template that we provide in Redwood. We're just using the general one over here. You can also have a primary action here. So something that you do with the object that you're showing in a drawer. In our case, we can have like an email um, button, for example. You can also define the size of the drawer if you want to. Next thing we want to do is put some data on the page. We're going to take again the employees, drop it into the uh, central area of our our template and just drop it as a detail form with a bunch of fields that we want to show here about the employee. We need to map, of course, which employee we want to show. So this would come from our selected employee. You can see that initially we don't see any data. And the reason is because this form is surrounded by a bind if that checks that we actually have a value of a selected employee. So one of the best practices about Roar is to delay the actual fetching of information and showing the information until it's actually relevant. To do that, we're going to right click our bind if and use a surround with to add a defer around this. This would make sure that the data in the drawer would only be fetched when we actually open the drawer. Okay. So um, we can now uh, remove the temporary override and instead associate the open property of the drawer pop-up with a new variable that we're creating. This would be a Boolean variable and we'll call it show drawer. By default, we don't want to show the drawer. So let's set the default value for this variable to be false. Now we do want to show it once we select an employee, right? So we have an action chain already associated with this selection event. And what we're going to do here is assign a variable that would set the show drawer to true. So this would tell the drawer, hey, it's time to show yourself. All right, so that's basically our design. We can run our page and see the behavior. We have a list of employees. We can click on an employee. This would pop up the drawer where we can see the information about the employee. Okay. And depending on which employee we click on, it would pop up. If we click outside the drawer, it would close. But notice that the close button right now doesn't actually close the drawer. And that's because there's a specific event in this drawer template that is associated with closing the drawer. And over here, you can do whatever you need to do. For example, maybe you need to save some data. Maybe you need to do something else. In our case, all we need to do is just actually close the drawer. 
And to do that, we're going to set the variable called show door to false. So again, we're using an assigned variable here, setting the variable to false. And maybe one more thing to do in our application. Um, we have the image of the employee instead of showing it in an input text component over here. We can remove the input text and instead bring in, for example, an avatar component, which would be a little bit better looking. All right, set the size of the avatar and bind it to the data from our employee's uh, picture field over here. All right, let's run our application again. And now when we click on an employee, we can also see the image and there's the close button and we can click the close button and it will close the door. Now this is very useful, this usage of door, especially on smaller screens. For example, if we take the same page we were running and run it on something like a mobile device, you can see that there's limited space to show information about an employee, but using the door actually gives us a way to show additional information in a clear way with the ability again to close it and go back to see information about other employees. So this is how you add the drawer into a Visual Builder application.